Thank you very much, uh, Professor Yao. Uh, we would now like to, in the few minutes we have, to open the floor for questions, if you have. Um, but I may, perhaps I may make an attempt to place this in a context and begin by asking or uh, referring to at least two uh, th themes or issues. I um, mean, the first question would be why uh, presenting on this collaboration in the th so-called third pole region in the Arctic Circle Assembly? And, uh, and then secondly, uh, a question about the recent so-called Hindu Himalaya assessment report. Uh, so the first question would be uh, if you could uh, tell us uh, a little bit about why this is relevant in the Arctic context and recent efforts at the Institute of Tibetan Plateau Research to actually establish a database with data from the Arctic because uh, several years ago <coughs> it became clear that data from the Arctic was relevant for the third pole. Perhaps you may, would like to begin to, or if I may ask you to comment on that briefly before we then have questions from the floor. Yeah. Uh, is that okay? Yeah. Now talk about uh, linkage between the North Pole and the Third Pole. Uh, actually, uh, from point of view of scientists, uh, we really see the impact, direct impact uh, of the climate change from the North Pole and its impact on the mid-latitude weather process. Uh, because uh, a lot of studies found that actually with the change of climate in Arctic region and then in winter, we have much more stronger, uh, stronger uh, frontier process that push forward the cold waves uh, to the mid latitude. And that kind of process actually impact China, impact a lot of uh, mid latitude countries. And also uh, people found that with the warming in Arctic and uh, actually uh, that kind of process uh, falls a kind of uh, severe heat process. Uh, it's also a kind of linkage. Uh, of course, from the third pole part, uh, its uh, impact uh, will push forward the wasteless uh, to the northern side. Uh, of, of course, mechanisms are some very complex, but some kind of uh, uh, statistical, statistical processes or results are there. So that's uh, just from the scientific point of view. Uh, so talk about the data issue. Uh, I think that uh, scientists already use the uh, data, which is uh, available from Arctic observation uh, for the studies uh, between atmospheric circulation linkage uh, between the North Pole and the mid latitude all of the third pole region. Thank you very much. Would there be questions from the audience at this point? Well, apparently not. So, <laughs> so is some, can some, oh, there you are. So yes, yeah. please. So um, I'm Shalogna. And uh, we, are, we have a think tank for polar issues in, in India. And uh, my question to you is, uh, you talked about GLOF, uh, you know, these glacial lakes that actually are so high up. And uh, when they burst, because they are melting, uh, they really wash downstream. And there's a huge population, 224 million people that actually live uh, in the third pole. And uh, countries like India, where there has been a lot of tragedies, and it's all over the newspapers, and the amount of tragedies we have because of these glacial lake outbursts. Um, my question to you is that you showed us a monitoring slide where you monitor data. Uh, do you have any monitoring for these uh, lakes? That are, there are numerous lakes. There are hundreds and thousands of these lakes. So how would you? Uh, because most of these lakes do not lie in Indian territory. It lies beyond the Indian territory. So how would you look for them and, you know, 
Yeah, very uh, critical question. Actually, uh, as a scientist, or as scientists, uh, we uh, classify the uh, lakes, I mean glacial lakes, as uh, uh, most dangerous lake, dangerous lake, maybe normal lake, different classifications or categories. And then we choose the most dangerous lake to monitor. Uh, but that's not enough, uh, because uh, uh, our capability uh, to monitor all the lakes are still limited. Uh, but recently, we have some kind of uh, contract uh, with Nepal uh, about uh, the most dangerous lake. Uh, Upreach in China side. Uh, we uh, used uh, the monitoring system and uh, to uh, have uh, uh, real-time process monitor. Uh, that's just a start. Uh, just a kind of example that uh, we will do that maybe uh, with as many as possible in the future. And also, we are monitoring a lot of ice claps site because uh, 19, the 2018 ice claps was also very dangerous for Indian side. Uh, that a lot of newspaper report about that process. And uh, fortunately, uh, that was uh, uh, a gentle consequence with the effort because the Chinese government spent a lot of effort to try to reduce the uh, risk. And we we'll also started monitoring this kind of ice claps process. If I may ask a concluding question, uh, <clears throat> and this is again regarding the relationship between the Arctic and the Third Pole region. Uh, uh, last year, the uh, Hindu Kus Himalaya assessment report was published and was covered relatively widely in the international media. Would you say that the work preparing that report was uh, to some extent inspired by the way in which international collaboration of similar reports has been done in the Arctic in the past? And can you comment on that briefly and perhaps the highlights or main results? Yeah. Actually, uh, uh, as my personal opinion, uh, I have been part participating in all the Arctic assembly meetings and, uh, uh, because all the scientists uh, experienced uh, it's a long history. So for the third pole studies, we are beneficiaring from experience and knowledge you have for the North Pole studies. So that's come to your question that uh, the Hindu Kush uh, assessment is a kind of uh, uh, outcome following the Arctic assessment, in my personal idea, uh, because you have a lot of assessment reports uh, before. And also the Hindu Kush assessment was a kind of example that uh, international scientists working together for the third pole region. Uh, on that note of uh, uh, reminder of, a collabora of the uses and value of collaboration between scientists in different and remotely separated parts of the world, we conclude this session. Thank you.